guys, good morning, how are you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video. Second hand club fitting is the topic of today. I said six months ago that I want to start doing second hand club fits, but at the same time I need to make sure that I've got enough stock to actually make it worthwhile. So that is the plan, that is the goal. I wanna show you where we're at, at the moment, the plan for the future and how it's even gonna be achievable or possible. But I wanna show you my magical cupboard. And here it is, the magical Christmas decorations. What you've all been waiting for, Obviously, we've got all the golf clubs in the cupboard now. I've tried to get rid of all the golf clubs in the flat and just try and find a place for them. We haven't got much space, but obviously, once we get the house, that will all change. Um, uh, some driver heads at the back here. I need to reshaft a couple of the pin drivers at the back. Obviously, the other ones are all adjustable, so I need to get adjustable shafts to go in those. And that's kind of going to be the club fitting process um, uh, with drivers. I'm going to get a job lot of shafts, hopefully, in the future, and then just have different shafts that I can put in and out to give that person either reg flex, stiff flex, x flex, depending on what kind of style or performance that they want to have out of their driver heads. Irons, I've got three sets of irons at the moment. Um, uh, again, irons is gonna be completely different. How I'm gonna actually try and fit some with irons is basically gonna be more for the beginner level because I'm just gonna go through shaft type and then head design. I, if you're looking for more forgiveness and higher launch, it needs to be a bigger head. If you're looking for more control, more of a blade. But at the same time, the bonus with this is that you actually get to try the full set. So you don't just get to try a seven iron and hope the rest works. You get to try the full set which does make a bit of difference, but overall, second-hand club fitting is kind of geared towards the beginner anyway. Like, this isn't for your kind of Cat 1 golfer. Like, if you got down to Cat 1 and you enjoy the game and you play it a lot, then potentially you're going to spend a lot of money. I'm not saying everyone is. If anything, actually, when you get down to Cat 1, you realise exactly what kind of stuff works and doesn't work, and it's not always the marketing or performance of clubs nowadays anyway. Overall, really happy with the stock. We've got woods, drivers, some lovely Cleveland RTX wedges that you can see down the bottom there. They are in fantastic condition. Putters, you name it. But the stuff doesn't last long. Like I put it on eBay, it goes um, quite quickly. So it's always rotating. So what I have this week won't be exactly what I have next week. So that's always interesting. But then at the same time comes with its own challenges because if I've got loads of stiff legs drivers and someone comes to me and needs high loft um, and need a um, very um, like regular flex or even um, a flex shaft and I don't have any in stock then obviously that's a problem which means that I need to have more than this. Like I'd say at the moment I've got about two grand worth of stuff in the cupboard here give or take a couple of hundred but that's probably not enough to do a decent club fit. Yes, if you're a beginner, I could probably be like, oh, I'd take a Ping G15 driver, reg flex shaft, perfect, and then sell it in like a year's time once you got used to it and potentially need something stiff flex. But this isn't enough to do a decent club fit and I need to start building more stock and that's getting there. Like, bearing in mind we had like 700 pounds worth of stock, we're now up to like two and a bit grand worth of stock and we've got some more money in the PayPal account as well. I'll show you the current turnover of the eBay account as well um, over the last 90 days. Um, obviously I haven't made all of that money, um, quite a lot of it's gone straight back into buying more clubs, but it seems to be working. Facebook, um, Gumtree, eBay, you name it. You guys as well have messaged me. So we've bought quite a few clubs and we've got quite a few things to obviously try and test, which is all is exciting um, but let's get these clubs out I want to go through the kind of secondhand club fitting process of how I think it's actually going to work um, and then basically we'll go from there any questions guys though do message me down below so I was going to lug all of this to the driving range but then I really thought there's not much point because all I'm going to be doing is talking about the actual process of how this is actually going to kind of come together so I want to talk about driver fitting first of all <sighs> Why the heads are adjustable now, so it does make it a lot easier to do a club fit or a second hand club fit with drivers because then you can tailor the loft, you can tailor the heads, you can tailor the shafts as long as you've got enough shafts. And that's my first obstacle. Now, I will show you a listing that I've kind of put an offer for, and it's probably the biggest gamble of this whole series. Um, I've offered this guy, well, he came back to me for 125 driver shafts different flexes, slightly different lengths, um, some ladies, um, uh, some stiff, ex-stiff, majority of stiff, which is good because that's going to be the majority of people or majority of shafts I'm actually going to fit for. Anyway, he came back to me with a price of £2,350, which is quite a lot of money. And if you divide that by 125, it works out about £18 a shaft, which isn't bad at all. 
I've been cheeky, I've gone in at 2100. I've sent that message this morning, so we'll see how that all pans out. But I could be spending two grand on driver shafts. Um, uh, but the idea with those shafts is with the cheaper ones, because some of them are worth 50 pounds, some of them realistically are worth like 20, 25 pounds. However, with the 20 to 25 pound ones, I'm gonna be putting them in things like this. So obviously the Ping G15 head, unbelievable head, um, uh, really good. You could probably get a brand new one of these for like, 70 pounds, 80 pounds, something like that. Not brand new, sorry. One with a shaft in it, not one that's got no shaft. So you can get one with a shaft in it for like 70, 80 pounds. However, I need to take that out, drill it out, sort it out, and then put something in it. Now, if I have some of these 20 pound shafts, reg flex, potentially stiff flex, I can whack in there, put a new grip on it, then it's worth 80 pounds. Um, uh, and that's probably what I'd use like the cheaper ones for. The more expensive ones, the ones with adapters, because they all come with different adapters, Callaway, Ping, Titleist, Mizuno, whatever, um, they're the ones that I'll probably use for fitting. So if I had like an M1 head here, for example, that's in relatively good condition, it's got quite a few marks on the top there, it needs a bit of a clean up, etc. Um, I bought this head, I think, for 70 pounds. Um, uh, once I put a shaft in it, potentially um, uh, it's gonna be worth, I don't know, 140, 150 pounds. So, but then at the same time, I can kind of add value to that person because this is the kind of head that I'd be like, what do you play off? And they're like, I play off uh, 14. I used to be off 24. I've got a 12 degree Ben Ross A-Flex driver. I'm looking to get something a bit more low spinning. And I go, oh, look at this. Put it on the launch monitor, hit it. And I go, there you go. Plus, I'll give you 20 quid for your Ben Ross driver as well. So that's the whole idea of a driver fit um, uh, in uh, pretty much a nutshell. Um, uh, trying to get enough shafts, heads, and obviously the grand plan, like five year plan for me is to have my own kind of studio where all the stock's kept. I don't have to keep taking it from the flat to a driving range, flat to a driving range. I'm very lucky where I work at Lower Hennick because Ian's fully on board and he loves the idea of the second-hand club fitting. I know there are second-hand club fitters out there, um, uh, but it's not really shouted about. I know it's bigger in America, definitely. Um, uh, but again, it's quite a bit of a passion for mine and it's starting to grow quite quickly, even though we've only been doing this, what, two, three months, something like that. Um, as you saw earlier, I've done about six and a bit grand turnover. I think we've made, like if I add all of this up, if I sold all of this with everything in the PayPal, I think we're standing at about 2,800 pounds, I believe. Obviously a lot of work, and I'm talking a lot of work's now gone into that. So we're not making that much per hour. Um, uh, but overall, I wanna create an experience with these so you can kind of come for a club fit and go, right, I want an X stiff nine degree head. What can you do for 100 pounds? And I go, this Srixen head with this shaft is a great combination. It's 120 pounds, he rips it, he gains 30 yards because the launch angle's at 12 degrees and the spin's at 1900, Bob's your uncle. And don't get me wrong, you can sell that driver back to me in a year's time for 80 pounds. Can't lose. Now the tricky bit of this whole journey is gonna be these irons because Reshafting them, like a lot of you have messaged me, Simon, should I reshaft them or should I get new irons? I always say get new irons, not like brand new, but get second hand irons. Because to reshaft a club, I mean the shaft, the cheapest shafts for an iron are like 15 pounds. So you're talking eight irons, 100 plus pounds for the actual materials. And then finding someone to do it cheaply, because let's be honest, reshafting a whole set of irons is gonna take me probably three hours. So therefore, if you think like 30 pound an hour, that's 90 pounds, so it's 200 pounds already just to reshaft your irons and you don't even know if that's gonna work. So, I always suggest buying or getting a second hand set or trading in, etc. But there are things I can do to tailor it to someone. For example, if someone comes to me and wants an iron set like these, but is very tall or very short, either or, I can cut or extend them and that doesn't really take that long and you can get re-gripped as well. It's still gonna add value, it's still gonna cost money but you can still get that and when you're thinking a brand new set of irons is 1200 pounds and I can custom fit forged irons because I can bend those, I can make them weaker, I can make them stronger, um, I can make them more upright, I can make them flatter, I could probably do a decent set of forged irons for about 400 pounds, all in all, with labour and new grips. So, with irons, that is something I can do. Again, I don't think I'm gonna be doing many of those because if you are at the level that iron fittings kind of make sense and you're looking at forged clubs and you're looking at the right length, upright, et cetera, you're probably just gonna get a club fit. But I still wanna provide that service because there are gonna be people out there that want that. 
cast iron clubs like the M1s that I've just shown you, you can't bend, you can't move very reluctantly would I do that. I can lengthen them or shorten them, but that does change the um, line angle at the bottom. Um, uh, and to be honest, any cast iron clubs, the Ping G20, 30, G series, whatever, the M series from TaylorMade, Callaway, Rogue, whatever it might be, that's for your beginner. And to be honest, if you've got a 40 yard slice, two degrees upright, it's not gonna make the blind bit, blindest bit of difference. There might be a few people out there that try and convince you up otherwise, but that does make it a slightest bit, a bit of difference. So a lot of those people that come to me for an iron fit, realistically, it's just getting the right shaft in there for them so they can progress to a level that they know what they want or they want a forged head, they want more of a blade. Um, uh, realistically, if you're coming by like a set of irons like that, for example, for like 200, 250 pounds, it's more of a case of, have you got um, the right head? Have you got the right? Do you need graphite? Do you need steel? Um, uh, and you probably haven't got a set of irons at this point, or you've got a package set of irons, and then you can see the improvement, and then obviously put it on launch monitor and test it. And as I say, you can try five to pitch and wedge, which does make quite a bit of sense. Please do give me some advice if you think I could do any better on the iron fit side of it, because I'm pretty sure when it comes down to iron fits you just need abundance. It'd be great if I had seven sets of M1s, seven sets of Ping G400s, seven sets of Ping G10s, seven sets of Mizuno, whatever. So then go, here you go, here you go, here you go. And then you can just flip them all around. That'd be the ideal situation, but obviously I think we're quite a long way away from that. Just notice how much my hair's actually grown. There we go, eight weeks of growth that is. Um, uh, so launch monitors, I've talked a lot about launch monitors. Um, yes, I will be getting one. I'll probably get GC, GC2 because it just makes sense. It's portable, it takes pictures of the ball, therefore I can do it in the net accurately. I know some launch monitors, they track more of the flight, hitting those into nets. They're okay, but they're just not as good as GC2 in terms of just in front of you ball, take the picture of the ball, whatever. I found in the past. Connects to the iPad very easily, I can use that for lessons and also use it for this. Um, uh, so. The whole idea of this is that there'll be certain days in a month that I'd do a second hand club fit, I'd have it booked out for an hour slot, you come down, you bring your stuff, you bring seven iron, bring a driver, whatever it might be, not you guys, anyone, um, uh, and basically you just test it, you test all the equipment, if there's, I've said this to every, every lots of you have had a club fit with me for brand new stuff as well, um, uh, if it doesn't make a single bit of difference, I don't want you to take it away because it's only bad on my reputation, so the idea is you come in, if there's a difference in distance and dispersion um, and confidence and you love the aesthetics, etc then obviously it makes sense, if you don't tick all those boxes it's not really worthwhile, so coming down, our slot, irons, driver, whatever you want to test and try, and then I'll just give you a price on your stuff as well, there's no point you just keep it in the garage if you want to trade in your driver, irons, I might even owe you money, um, but that'd be a quality video if I could get someone to, that's just been fitted for like something brand new, like brand spankers 450, I mean that's a bit gutting actually, I don't really want that kind of scenario, but it'd be interesting, and then I'd get you to actually hit it further with something that's like five years old, um, uh, and to be honest, brings me onto a topic, I'd love someone to have a club fit, seven days in a row. You have a club fit in the morning, club fit at lunchtime, club fit in the evening, club fit when you're hung over, club fit when you're bright, like the most rested you've ever been and I bet your results will come out five times different. You warm up before one, you don't warm up before one, you've been in the car for two hours, you haven't been in the car for two hours. There's so many factors that I've never really tested in a club fit and it's interesting because you can spend two grand on a club fit depending on how you're swinging it that day. And then you wake up the next day and potentially swinging it completely different. That's why I'm a big advocate of people going only for a club fit if they've been playing the game for a very long time because you have a good understanding of exactly where your swing is and whether you're swinging it right or swinging it or not swinging it right. If you've only been playing a year, questionable. So guys, there you have it. That's the quick roundup summary of where we are in the second hand club stuff, all laid bare, um, just so that you know what's happening, because I do get quite a few messages. I think we're probably about six months off though, realistically, in terms of, for me personally, giving a quality club fit, like I've done in the past, but obviously with all of this stuff, um, uh, and then finding more space, because it's already starting to overtake the flat, um, and we've only just begun. Guys, thank you ever so much for watching. Leave this video a like, subscribe if you're new. Catch you guys there.